In this Substance Designer tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can add new items to the Substance Designer library. So to do that, we're going to have to append a new path, and we actually do that using the System Preferences. So here I'm going to go to Tools, Preferences, and so here in the Preference dialog, we're going to go to this Projects category, and it's here within these project files is where we can append uh, this new path to our library. And so uh, before we actually take a look at the setting itself, I just want to talk a bit about these project files. So by default, you're going to have uh, a default project and a user project. And so each one of these projects is going to have its own set of preferences associated with it. So notice here we have user project. Let's say that I create a new project. So here I'm just going to click the plus button and I'm just going to select one here that I've already done, this Unity project, and I'll click save. So I've created a new project. Notice that with this project selected, uh, things like the uh, submeshes name filter is blank. If I select the user project, notice here that I actually have value uh, within this project. Now again, this is kind of like the default that ships with uh, Substance Designer. So again, what this is doing is it allows me to create a project and associate specific preferences with that project. So in the case of this example, uh, I'm thinking in terms of I'm setting up Substance Designer to work with um, a specific software like Unity. So what I might do in this case is uh, with Unity selected, the project, I might scroll down to the Tangent Space plugin and change this to uh, work for Unity. So here I would click this uh, button and it just navigates me right to the Tangent Space and I'll select the Unity T-Space plugin and click open. And so here I've changed that. Now notice if I go back to user project, it defaults back to the MIC T-Space plugin. However, let's say it's time for me to work on this. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a project that's specific for Unity. So I can make sure that Unity is set here to my default project. And that means that it's already going to set itself up specific for Unity. Now I have other preferences like for instance I could come up here to my submeshes sub name filter and I can change uh, the suffix here or maybe uh, for the specific pipeline that I'm working in I want to uh, append uh, a specific name for uh, my bakes such as ambient occlusion maybe I just want this to be underscore AO or uh, curvature I just want this to be uh, under, underscore uh, CURV or something like that I can do all that and associate it with a specific project file. So. I'm explaining this because, again, it's important to understand that the project preferences are going to be tied to these project files. And when we actually create the filter here within our substances on the library, you need to indicate which project uh, that you're going to be using for that filter. And so in this case, um, what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to use this Unity project, so I'm just going to close this out. And I'm actually going to set this up underneath my user uh, default project. And so here I'm just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can see that I have this library category and here I already have a path so let me just delete this and we'll do this from scratch so here I have it selected and I'm just clicking the X button uh, to remove it and so now we're gonna add a new path so to do this I'm gonna click this plus button and now I'm gonna navigate to a directory uh, that contains uh, the items uh, that I want to be able to bring into the library and in my case I have uh, this content on an external drive so here I'm just going to my external drive and in my case I'm going to content uh, substance database. Uh, here is my procedural SBSAR files. Uh, and then here I have this PBR materials. Now here I'm talking about substance files and I'm talking about SBSAR. So you can use uh, substance, just the actual source project, the SBS or SBSAR. But you can also uh, be just searching for textures, so bitmap files or meshes, something of that nature. So it doesn't have to be only a substance. You could actually use the library to bring in you know, different types of assets. For this tutorial, we're just going to bring in some substances. So here, uh, the substance database, the PBR material, within this directory, I have a bunch of subdirectories that contain a whole lot of different substances that I want to be able to search here through the, the library. So in my case, uh, I'm coming up to this uh, PBR materials. Now notice again, this is kind of like my root directory. And within this directory, I have a bunch of subdirectories. So what I want to do is I want to be able to work with all of these directories. So that's why I have uh, the PBR materials. This is kind of the folder that I'm at right now. This is where I am uh, in the hierarchy list. So at this top level, I'm going to select the folder. So I click the select folder button. And now I have this specific path ready. So here, my user project now has a new path to the library that I can use. So with this done, I'm going to click Apply and OK. And so now we're ready to actually create some filters 
here within our library so that we can see all of the content that is available to me at that directory path. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come over to my library and I'm going to click this add folder button. So I'm going to create a new folder and so with this I'll just right click and I'll go to rename and let's just call this database. So here's my database. So now I have this new group and within this group I need to start creating a couple filters. So let's start with uh, the first and so here what I'm going to do is come over to this button, this plus button and it's add a new filter so I'll just click this to add a new filter. So let's give this a name. First, let me just bring over this explore window so we can talk about these directories again. So remember we added that path at PBR materials and so now we've created a new filter and this filter, what I want to do is I want to filter all of the substances that are in one of these directories. So in my case I'm going to choose bricks to start. So within bricks we have a bunch of substances here. So let's uh, utilize this bricks. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go inside of bricks and now I'm just going to use uh, just a technique here to uh, quickly uh, get a, a path. So inside the bricks folder I'm going to come over to one of these substances and I'm just going to right click this I'm going to go to properties and so uh, here under this location I can just copy this location. Now notice that even though I'm inside the bricks folder and I've right clicked this, this item it's not giving me the path all the way to this item it's just giving me the path to the folder or the directory this item is located in so notice it stops here at bricks so with this selected I'm just gonna copy this now this is just a shortcut way of how I get this path so um, you know we're, so we're gonna use this in a moment so now that I have this we'll just click cancel and let's just move this guy out of the way we'll use that location we just copied here in a moment so we have filter again this is going to be that bricks so everything in that bricks folder so let's just call this bricks and so now that we have bricks we have some criteria here that we need to set and this criteria is going to uh, uh, tell Substance Designers Library how we want to filter the assets. So if I click this drop down notice here we have a bunch of different options. So here notice before I said that you know we can filter uh, through uh, different items so it just doesn't have to be substances. We have bitmaps, vector graphics, meshes and so on. Uh, so it's pretty powerful in that we can use uh, Substance uh, Designers Library to, to look at a host of different types of um, assets. In our case though for this tutorial we're going to choose graph. Graph is going to be uh, the substance so either an SBS or an SBS AR file. So now that we have this graph, I need to choose the next level of criteria. So here we can choose things like the base name, uh, the category tag, this kind of information that's associated with a substance graph. However, I'm going to choose this option called URL. It's just a path or a location to something. And so you recall just a moment ago, we copied the location to uh, that root folder that contains all of these substances that we want to filter. And Speaking of that, you notice that the next option here says contains. Now we have a couple options, but for using this URL method, we want to keep this at contains. And now in the actual field itself, I'm just going to paste in that location that we have. So notice it's the location and then it goes all the way here to bricks. So now that I have this in place and I hit the return key or the enter key, it now filters all of the substances that are in that bricks folder. So here if we go back to um, our directory, it's filtering all of these substances that are in the bricks folder and that bricks folder is contained within this PBR materials folder. Again, that is where we added or we appended that new path to our project. So let me just move this out of the way again. Now, something that's important to uh, understand here is we have this project dropdown. Now since we have done this uh, under the default user project, so again this is you know kind of the default system of Substance Designer, we don't need to really set anything and this is going to work. But if we did set up this new path underneath a new project, we would have to click this drop down and choose that project. So here just for completion's sake, I'm choosing user project. And so now that we have this in place, you can see that I was able to pull these substances from an external drive and now I have those uh, filtered and searchable here within my Substance Designer library. Let's just do another one. So here I'm going to click the folder again and I'm going to add a new filter. This time, uh, let me just bring my window over and let's work with uh, Sci-Fi here. And so we'll just bring this guy back. I'm going to name this Sci-Fi. And so for our first category, we're going to set this to graph. Uh, we're going to use the URL again and contains. 
Uh, let's just go back to our window just to kind of show you how I do this again. We'll just go into sci-fi. I'll just pick one of these guys here, go to properties. Uh, just a shortcut here for me just to grab this path. So we just copy it and we'll just close this out. And I'll paste this in and hit the uh, enter return key. And now this is filtered. So now we have our database. So at this point, it's uh, grabbing those substances uh, that are located on that external drive. With the database folder selected, you can see that here we have everything. Or we could look at it on, our, uh, on a per filter basis. So here we can look at just the bricks. Or if we select sci-fi, we can see only the sci-fi uh, sorted uh, substance files. And so that is how you bring external assets into the Substance Designer library.